I had to hold my son with his neck ripped open and it, it is just not anything that anyone should have to experience. A family is reliving a nightmare after coming face to face in court with the man charged with causing this deadly accident. You're watching Newsday TV. Thanks for joining us. I'm Macy Eglin. The wife and mother of the victim spoke out today after court. The man responsible for the crash was arraigned today. My son is deeply depressed. Everyone in my family and my household, we are deeply depressed. I have breakdowns every day. Uh, this is a, a long, this is, this is forever. Michael D'Angelo of Lindenhurst pled not guilty to a slew of charges, including aggravated vehicular homicide, vehicular manslaughter, and DWAI. The DA says the defendant had multiple run-ins with police in the days leading up to the crash, including a 911 call that he had overdosed and was being given Narcan. This defendant, Michael D'Angelo, turned his car into a missile. The defendant, while allegedly high on both cocaine and fentanyl, drove at speeds of 120 miles an hour on Sunrise Highway at 99% acceleration. A 60-year-old man, his two children, and his granddaughter were killed. They were on their way to get ice cream at the time. D'Angelo faces up to 25 years in prison. There were no bidders today at the auction of Thomas Valva's old home. Prosecutors have called this Center Mauritius home a house of horrors. Eight-year-old Thomas Valva died of hypothermia in 2020 after he and his brother were forced to sleep in a freezing cold garage. His father and the father's ex fiance are both in prison after being convicted of murder. And now many are wondering what happens next for the house. The property, uh, because there were no bidders, will go back and become the property of m and Bank, and they will decide how they will dispense with it in the future. And neighbors tell Newsday they are not surprised there were no bidders. I don't think anybody will want to live here after what happened in this house. And that's what I think, that what happened. Nobody want to buy this house. A Calverton man has been sentenced to 18 years in prison for burglary and assaulting his ex-girlfriend and her family. The Suffolk DA says Guillermo Ayala Jr. slashed multiple people with a razor blade as they tried to stop him from entering her parents' house. A Mastic Beach woman was critically injured in a crash that shut down part of the LIE. It happened in Islandia, just east of exit 58 this morning. Police say traffic slowed down and there was a chain reaction crash. 35-year-old Amanda McDermott was rushed to Stony Brook University Hospital in critical condition. Five others suffered non-life-threatening injuries. The search for a permanent LIRR president is on. The MTA CEO said they are looking to fill the position within six months. Earlier this week, the interim president announced she's stepping down. Now, commuters and officials have been calling for a full-time leader for the railroad, saying they could pay better attention to issues impacting commuters. An exciting day for the cricket community on Long Island and around the world. The Cricket World Cup will be hosted at Eisenhower Park next year. Steve Langford reports from where the 34,000 seat stadium will be built. If you build a cricket stadium here in Eisenhower Park, Cricket's World Cup will play here in 2024. Approximately uh, 60 days ago, uh, I was uh, contacted by the uh, International Cricket Council, and they said, uh, you know, Nassau County is a great venue, would you consider? A temporary stadium to be assembled and disassembled will go up here, when Long Island will be one of four host venues for the International Cricket Council Men's T20 World Cup in June of 2024. It's a joyful moment for the cricket community here in Nassau County, and you can't even imagine how big of a role this will play in promoting cricket for the youngster in our community. The stadium's construction cost will be paid by the International Cricket Council, the county says. The event will have tremendous economic impact, the county executive says, and the sport itself will get a major boost. Most importantly, the youth cricketers of Long Island who are taking over the sport and pushing out middle-aged immigrant players like me and really doing well 
with their dedication, their hard work, with no practice facilities and no grounds to play at. The cricket stadium will seat 34,000 people, but will later be moved to another location, the county executive says. Yeah, a lot of people will come to see it here, yeah. right, and they will love to come. The cricket is not, uh, you know, f famous in USA, not popular like the baseball, so I think it's a go good start for, for America. I love cricket. I'm a huge fan of cricket from India. It's the first time the United States will have hosted the International Cricket Tournament. Steve Langford for Newsday TV. NASA BOCES hosted a job fair today in an effort to fight staffing shortages. Schools across Long Island are in need of bus drivers, aides, security officers, custodians, and more. And it seems like there's interest. I'm interested in a custodian job. You know, I'm retired and I, I have to find something to do with my time. $25. Over 30 school districts were at that event. Let's take a look at your forecast tonight. Clear and definitely feeling like fall. Cool, around 55 degrees. Tomorrow's looking nice, mostly sunny. Highs in the upper 60s to low 70s. We'll take a look at your seven day coming up in a few. Witches have never been known for their beauty, but the looks of one on the North Shore has been haunting the St. James community for years. Now that's about to change. We always said that she watches over the town. Winnie the witch has seen better days, especially now that she's been beheaded. She was built back in 1977 here at Wicks Farm in St. James and became a staple in the community, even a top roadside attraction. Who else has a 30 foot witch in their town? I mean, you just look at her and it's like she's a little creepy, but there's there's something about her I like, you know. At 30 feet tall, she's hard to miss. And after years of being in the elements, downright hard to look at. But now Winnie's head is gone because she's getting a much needed makeover. One day we were driving past and I, I asked my boyfriend, I was like, why doesn't someone fix her up? And he was like, well, who's going to fix up a 30 foot witch? And I was like, why don't we? So two years ago, the couple got permission from the farm's owner and started collecting donations for the repairs. They've raised nearly $20,000 and the work has begun. Winnie will be reconstructed from the ground up. She hasn't been touched in 10 years, but soon she'll be back to her former ghoulish glory. A local contractor is currently working on her facelift and they hope to have her home just in time for Halloween. Why let this thing go down when we can keep it up for generations and generations to come? So many people drive by her every day on 25A. If you'd like to read more, you certainly can on Winnie the Witch on Newsday.com. Click get more below the Newsday TV video box. Grab a pretzel and a pint. Elisa Stefano has a look at some of the best beer gardens to hit this fall. It's a story you'll see only in Newsday. Step into Repeal 18 in Huntington and step back in time. The cool cocktail lounge and beer garden serves up a 1933 vibe. Repeal 18 is a celebration of the end of Prohibition. Um, it's the next day after Prohibition had ended. Walk through the bar and into the backyard for the beer garden. There's a variety of about 50 beers to choose from, including many local favorites. You can also order a craft cocktail and play games. They really pay attention to detail here. There are so many cool spots and fun photo ops. The best of both worlds. Right now, there's both big trends in regards to the cocktails and the craft cocktails that we do, and as well as the craft beer, so it kind of goes hand in hand. Next up, Nassau County Garden Social in East Meadow. We definitely wanted to bring something unique to the East Meadow community, which has been absolutely fantastic for us. So we brought like a little Brooklyn meets East Meadow vibe. Uh, lots of barn wood, brick, custom metal, and people love it. You'll be greeted by a big bar with 20 plus taps. Primarily all our beer is local from Long Island. Long Island makes the best beer. Oh, is that pumpkin beer? It looks really good. It's very tasty. Is it good? It looks really good. Pumpkin season. It is. 
Outside, a beer garden lined with trees and flowers sits beneath a cedar pergola. It is so beautiful sitting out here in the beer garden, but even if you're not drinking, there's something here for you to enjoy. Look at the size of this pretzel. It looks delicious. Mmm. You gotta try it with the mustard. <laughs> There's a real focus on food here. The diverse menu includes sesame-crusted yellowfin tuna, burgers, wings, and a favorite, French onion soup. Coming into our parking lot and walking into Garden Social, it's something you're really not expecting. We want people to come in here, have a great time, forget about life a while. Elisa DiStefano, Newsday TV. That food looks awesome. You can read more about the best beer gardens on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. I found my voice in broadcast television. I tell stories through my perspective and proud of who I am. I am thrilled to serve as your weekday morning anchor for Newsday TV. Newsday, covering Long Island like no one else can. You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Macy Eglins. Thanks for joining us. Hope you have a great night. We'll leave you with a look at your seven-day forecast.